Hello friends, welcome to Techno Automation. I am Ashish Patel and I am going to show you how I made this RGB LED controller using ESP12F module. I also installed weather data monitoring sensor on this board to monitor temperature and humidity data. I use Tasamota firmware on this ESP module. If you are not aware about Tasamota, this is the right place. I am going to explain uh, how we can flash Tasamota on ESP12F module, how we configure it and how we integrate it with our uh, home automation server like OpenHab or uh, Home Assistant. So let's get started. To make this PCB, I have used ESP12F module, AMS 3117 voltage regulator which converts 12 volt into 3.3 volt. Uh, to flash this uh, ESP12F module, I use FTDI converter and some jumper wires. And I use IRF540 MOSFET. These MOSFETs are logic level MOSFETs. It means we can operate it using 3.3 volt. And for isolation between MOSFET gate and ESP12F GPIO pin, I use optocoupler which is PC817 optocouplers. For current limiting and pull up, I use these 220 ohm resistors uh, and 10k ohm resistors. 10k ohm registers are for pull up and 220 ohms register are for current limiting. This is the output circuit diagram. So the output pin of ESP is connected with pin number 1 of PC817 optocoupler and pin number 2 is connected with ground using 220 ohm register. This is current limiting register. Pin number 4 is connected with 3.3 volt and pin number 3 of optocoupler is connected with gate of this MOSFET. Drain pin of the MOSFET is connected with common ground and source pin is exposed to external connection. So in case uh, this is the red channel then we have to connect this uh, source pin to the red wire of our LED strip and I have replicated this uh, circuit for three times. One for red, one for green and one for blue. This is the LED strip which is controlled by this module. So in this LED strip Three different LEDs are there, one is for red, one is for green and one, one is for blue. And the wires are four. So the black wire is uh, for 12 volt and uh, red, green and blue are connected with uh, this output pin of our MOSFET. I use this kind of female headers uh, so that I can remove or replace module uh, anytime. And uh, for ESP12F module, I use this breakout board. So let me show it. Uh, I use this kind of breakout board and uh, I soldered ESP12F module on this breakout board like this. So using this uh, breakout board, we can easily mount our ESP module on any breadboard or any PCB. And uh, another uh, important thing is we get two registers, uh, actually there are three registers. Uh, this register is connected between the CHPD pin and VCC and this second register is connected in between ground and GPIO 15. So using this breadboard, we do not require any external registers. And one more thing is about this zero ohm register. Let me show the back side of this uh, module. So here you can see the padding for AMS 3117. So if we install AMS 3117 module on this uh, padding, in that case we have to remove this uh, zero ohm registers and after that we can apply 5 volt directly, directly to this VCC and ground and we can operate this module on uh, 5 volt. Now it's time to flash this ESP module and for that I have used this FTDI converter and I wired this both module using this wiring diagram. So the RX pin of FTDI is connected with TX pin of ESP. TX pin of this FTDI is connected with RX pin. VCC and ground pins are straightly connected with VCC and ground. And I use one another ground pin of this FTDI to connect with GPIO 00 of ESP12F module. This is required to put ESP module in flashing mode. And one more thing required to be noticed is this yellow jumper. So let me focus the camera. So this FTDI module supports two different voltage levels. So this is the 3.3 volt side jumper. And if uh, I put the jumper in this location, then it will give 5 volt output. So if you are using this kind of ESP module, take care of this 
jumper position otherwise you can damage your ASP12F module. For temperature and humidity data I use this AM2302 sensor. So let me focus on the sensor. So you can see it is AM2302 sensor. So we get four wire beneath this sensor. So the first wire is uh, for 3.3 volt, second wire is for data, third wire is not used and fourth wire is for ground. Flashing tachometer on ESP8266 required flashing tool. For that I am going to use tachometer and its download link is mentioned over here. Second we require tachometer pre-compiled bin file which download link is here and some other helpful document is also mentioned over here. I am going to mention all this link in video description so that you can check out it anytime. I have already downloaded the Tasamotizer exe and uh, Tasamota pre-compiled bin file and it is in my download folder so let me redirect uh, into my download folder. Here you can see the Tasamotizer 1.1a.exe which is Tasamotizer executable file. I have already installed it and this one is the bin file which we are going to flash on ESP8266 module. Once you installed Tasamotizer on your laptop, you get uh, this Tasamotizer uh, application icon on your desktop or you can find it in your uh, program file. Then you have to open Tasamotizer app. Its UI is very simple because there are very few fields. So the first field is select COM port. In my case, it shows COM5 because my FTDI converter is already connected with a USB port and it is detected as a COM5. In your case, it may be different. So you have to check it and select proper COM port. Second thing is we have to open the bin file. So in my case, the bin file is in my downloads uh, folder. So I am in downloads folder and this is the tasamota.bin file. I am going to open it. Next is backup original firmware. If you have any Sonoff device which is programmed with EVLink software, in that case you can take backup of that. But in my case I am using 12F module which is fresh so I am not going to do that. And uh, we have to click this erase before flashing uh, checkbox button. Uh, it will uh, clear all ESP8266 SPIFS memory. Then next step is click on Tasamotize button. If everything is ok you can get this uh, progress bar. So the first step is erasing flash. Once this process completed, then bin file transferred to the ESP8266 module. Now you can see the Tasamota is in progress message over here. Once the flash process is completed, we have to restart our ESP8266 module. But before that, we have to disconnect this GPR00 pin so that ESP will boot with Tasamota firmware. Now I have already disconnected this pin. So I can remove the USB cable. So you can see the power is off now and I am going to restart the module. As soon as you restart the ESP8266 module, it will convert into AP mode so that you can uh, connect it using your mobile phone or you using your uh, laptop. So I am going to open my Wi-Fi of laptop. So here we go. We get this Tasamota. Uh, Wi-Fi open network. So we have to connect with this network. We have to press this connect button. And as soon as it connects with uh, our ESP8266 module, this page automatically redirected. So in this page, we have to mention our local network SSID and password. So I am going to enter my local network SSID and password. So SSID is Asis Patel. 0 2 and you have to enter password we can change host name of the device so i am going to uh, change its name to trial and hit save once we press save button module will restart once our ESP8266 module restart, it will connect with our local Wi-Fi network and we have to check its IP. For that, we have to open our Wi-Fi console and in that, we can get the connected device which name is trial. So you can see the trial name device is connected on the IP 192.168.1.80. So 
now we know the ip address so we have to place that ip on web uh, url 192.168.1.18 as soon as we hit enter we get the configuration page of tasamota so this is the basic setup so we have to change it so what we need to do is click configuration then again configure module as we are using esp 12f module we have to change the module type to option 18 which is generic module so here is the generic module and we have to hit save as soon as we hit save the module will again restart once device restarted it's time to set the input and output settings and for that we have to click configure module button now you can see all the gpio are mentioned in this list now i have used gpio 12 13 and 14 for rgb so my gpio 12 is uh, for green so i am going to put pwm 2 pwm 2 is for green pin number 13 13 is for red so i am going to set pwm1 so the pwm is for red uh, and gpio 14 is pwm3 pwm3 and the weather data sensor is connected on gpio 5 and its type is am2301 so you, you can see there are lots of options in this input output sections so this is the power of tasamota app we can do anything we can connect any sensor any uh, any kind of output device using this uh, web based user interface so we have set all our uh, output settings input settings so it's time to press save button as soon as we press save button module will get restart and here we go now our configuration part is completed and you can see uh, we get this uh, hsb control panel so we can change any color its brightness and we can get am2301 temperature humidity and dew point data on this web ui the data is not showing because esp8266 is right now in stand alone mode so let me connect it with my development board and connect it with uh, 12 volt and we will check the rgb led and weather data i have powered up the module connect the weather sensor and the rgb strip on the board let me show it so here you can see i have placed the module in its uh, uh, female socket and uh, i have connected each red green and blue output to the led strip cable and the weather data sensor is kept over here and on the web ui you get the data so the temperature is 40.5 degree humidity is 50.6% and dew point is 28.2 degree so we get all the data now let's take trial of rgb led and for that let me set the led strip over here so that you can get the uh, effect of the led so first of all i am going to place toggle button and bingo it's working so now let me change the color to red and you can see only red led are lit now it's time to light only blue and the green so you can see the tasamota is very easy and very useful app we can use it without doing any single line of code it's totally web based now let me show how i integrate this with my open app server open app uh, is a very versatile open source home automation platform i am using it since one year and i am going to connect this rgb led controller with open app using mqtt protocol so let's move on for integration of uh, this device with my open app server the first step is to connect it with my mqtt server and for that we have to click on this configuration button configure mqtt and here we have to enter the ip address of our mqtt server so in my case it's 192.168.1.100 
and we have to enter username password if you set mqtt server username and password in your server setting in my case i have set the username and password so i am going to put it so here we go i have already mentioned the open app mqtt server username and password and its ip address so it's good to go we can now press save whenever we change any setting and press save button module will get restart so this time again module get restart so we have to wait for a while now module is restarted and we have to check whether it is connected with mqtt or, uh, or not so and for that we have to open this console and in console we can check uh, activity which is uh, carried out by esp12f module so we can see in this line connecting to ap and it is connected and here it is uh, shown that mqtt attempting to connection and mqtt connected okay now it's good to go our module is connected with our mqtt server now we can control this device using mqtt server this is all about this video if you have any query or any doubt you can mention in the comment section of this video if you like this video hit like subscribe my channel and if you have any suggestion you can suggest me in comment section thanks for watching this video and i will post second part of this video uh, by the next week